Hi, Matt here. Today we will cover the construction of the sole swing arms. The swing arms consist of three separate parts that need to be made and welded together. The threaded bosses and castings will be joined together by airfoil tubing. Before we manufacture any part, we use SolidWorks simulation to stress test and evaluate the strength of each component. These simulations help guide our revisions throughout the design process. The parts performance is increased with each revision. All parts now meet our minimum target of four times safety factor. It's time to make the A-arms. We use a miter saw to cut the airfoil tube to the correct length. The miter saw makes quick work of the aluminum. You will see us use this power tool a lot throughout the build. It cuts quick and clean, and the blades can be purchased from our local hardware store. Aluminum is relatively soft compared to other metals, and this makes it easy to work with. We use airfoil tubing for the swing arms to reduce aerodynamic drag. These parts will be exposed to airflow and benefit from a streamlined shape. Kevin is operating the manual mill. Down the road, we will switch over to CNC milling for this operation. For now, it's more cost effective to run a manual mill. After zeroing the tool, cuts are made for the thread boss that will be welded in later. A roughing end mill is used for this step. It removes metal quick and inexpensively. We take our time with this cut because the airfoil tube is gently being held. If we tighten the vise too hard, we may deform and damage the tubing, which is a structural member and a Class A part. A piece of 6061 T6 aluminum is loaded into the lathe. It was cut off camera on the bandsaw from a larger 10 foot piece. It is also a structural part and will be put under great load while in use. This piece is faced, chamfered, and bored on the lathe. The part is transferred to the mill for final hole sizing and tapping. The test indicator gets us on center and the DRO logs the location. This piece is the threaded boss that gets welded into the airfoil tube. Its job is to hold the heim joint to the swing arm. The spiral flute taps are our favorite to work with. They cut easy and clear the chips very well. If you haven't used one yet, I highly recommend trying a spiral flute on your next project. A little bit of cutting oil is used to reduce drag while tapping. This part is now done. These parts are castings. The alloy we will be using is 356 casting aluminum from our local metal supplier. Before we committed to the casting process, we sent out a few samples for destruction testing. The samples passed with flying colors, which is a huge milestone for us. In order to make castings, you need a pattern. The pattern is made out of MDF sheets glued together and held to the table with a vacuum.
Our CNC router then cuts the 3D profile. Patterns and molds are a time-consuming process and are a very large investment in both time and money. We take care to ensure this investment doesn't go to waste. If the weather is going to change the air moisture content, then we will not manufacture the molds during the weather due to the risk of swelling and loss of dimensional accuracy. Before each mold or pattern is made, a design review meeting is held to evaluate the part and the molds to make sure we didn't miss anything. A revision after the fact would be a very expensive loss. Primer and sanding increases the surface finish. High quality automotive paint is used as opposed to other paints. This extra effort produces a very hard and durable finish that will last. Wood patterns need to be painted for several reasons. One is to prevent warping from humidity or moisture exposure and the other is to ease the pattern separation from casting sand. A smooth painted surface will slide easily away from the sand. The base coat and final clear coat are applied when we are ready to start casting. The flask is located by three pins embedded into the match plates. We choose to do match plates for our patterns because they are easy to scale up for production. Simply put, match plates are easier to automate than split molds and less costly than lost foam or lost wax to set up. Baby powder is used to ease the separation of sand from the pattern. We use Petrobond as our packing sand. We are located in Arizona and green sand dries very quickly out here. Using Petrobond sand gives us unlimited time to pack and prep the molds. The sand was hand sifted into buckets and packed with an air hammer. At this point the molds are quite heavy and a hydraulic hoist is used to separate the pattern from the mold. We are making four parts today, two large and two small. The molds are assembled together outside at our pouring station. We had the furnace going while we were prepping the molds. This way we save time waiting for the aluminum to melt. A pyrometer is used to check the temperature off camera. We are targeting 1300 degrees Fahrenheit to 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. As soon as we hit our target temperature, we pull the crucible and skim off any waste material, mostly aluminum oxide. Transfer the crucible to the ladle and make the pour. We wait for the casting to cool and then demold the part. It's a good part. The in feed risers and any flashing are trimmed off on our bandsaw. All the parts get a good sanding, and then they are sent off to heat treat for a T6 hardening. We want to thank Peter and his team at Phoenix Heat Treat for sponsoring this project. They have kindly offered to handle our heat treating needs for the prototype. Thank you Peter and everyone at Phoenix Heat Treat for helping make this dream come true. After heat treatment, the castings need to be machined. Our kit built CNC routers are used to machine custom fixtures for the castings. The Makita spindle operates at 10,000 RPM and above. We purchased 3 8 collets for the spindle, and this gives us access to large tools for less tool deflection while cutting. We can cut fast and cleanly, which is a must when doing 3D machining. There's a lot of material to remove and a lot of area to surface.
the castings need to be machined. We decided to do the machining on the lathe. In order to machine the part on the lathe, the compound had to come off and in its place a 3D machine fixture is bolted to the cross slide. This part needed to be drilled to the proper tapping dimension and our small mill did not have enough z-axis height to hold the drill and the part with the necessary clearance. Machining and drilling on the lathe solved this problem. Our lathe has 22 inches of z-axis movement and the mill only has 13. We treat the lathe at this point as if it were a horizontal milling machine. An ER32 collet holder is used in the spindle for holding our tooling. The setup is very rigid and works well. In many ways, it's a better mill. Standoff set the correct height for the fixture. The fixture is made out of ABS plastic, which is easier and faster to machine than aluminum on our CNC routers. Unlike wood, ABS is also unaffected by oil and water. Because the clamping brackets are thin, they had to be 3D machined out of aluminum. Because they're fairly small, it didn't take too long to make them. Wing nuts provide quick and easy holding force. Before we drill, we will do our facing operation. Our Tormach shell mill is used for roughing and a fly cutter is used to clean up the face. Tapping is done by hand, with a little help from a centering tool loaded into the spindle collet. Some cutting oil is used to ease the cutting process. The spiral flute tap turns easy and stays on center thanks to the centering tool. A small amount of pressure is applied to the carriage while the tap is churned to ensure a proper cut and prevent the tap from pulling away from the centering tool. This step is easy and very reliable and also very important. This tapped hole will hold the heim joints that attach the car's uprights to the swing arms. This fixture table was custom built by us on our CNC machines and is modular. Aluminum was chosen for the surface because of ease in manufacturing, weight, and corrosion resistance. The table turned out fantastic. Bolting straight onto the extrusion frames allows us to quickly and easily change the layout for fixtures. We're using a TIG welder for all of our welding. This method provides us with good control of each weld, as opposed to the other welding methods. When welding aluminum castings, it is important to make sure they don't overheat. Our castings have a T6 heat treatment that may be lost if the casting exceeds 440 degrees Fahrenheit. We keep track of the casting's temperature by using a temperature probe. The welded area is exposed to temperatures that easily eliminate heat treatment. This area is the heat affected zone and any heat treatment here will be lost, which means extra material will be needed to add strength in this area. 
Now that the large swing arms are done, the fixtures can be rotated and remounted for small swing arms. Building the fixtures to be flipped for multiple parts saved us money on raw materials and setup time. All that's left is to weld up the small swing arms and the front suspension is largely complete. This is a huge step for us in this project. These are the first parts of the car and many more are to come in due time. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We are documenting the entire build of the prototype, so make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss a single step in this build. If you want to know more about the car, visit our website. The link is in the description. The website also has a lot of free downloadable content, such as 3D models and plans to help you build some of the equipment you see. We are big on DIY and building the community, so check and see if there is something you could use. Here they are, all done. If you are interested in manufacturing, here is a video on how we made the fixtures. All of what you see is being produced by two people with the support of family and friends. If you want to help keep this video and downloadable content coming, or help the project along, you can make a donation through YouTube or on our website. Till next time, thanks for watching.